I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. The House Judiciary Subcommittee held a hearing on immigrant military members and veterans last week. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee reacted after over 50 people believed to be migrants were found last week in and around a tractor trailer near San Antonio. The tragedy appears to be linked to efforts to smuggle people across the border from Mexico. The Texas Democrat then called on lawmakers to reform America's, quote, broken immigration system. Listen in for more of her impassioned remarks. Uh, let me first of all uh, indicate uh, that Texas, uh, because of a number of uh, untoward policies and some inadequacies uh, in responding to the crisis of uh, smuggling, is seeing the largest number of deaths of migrants who are coming into this country um, under circumstances of desperation, uh, coming to be reunited with family, coming for work, coming and fleeing persecution of gangs and violence and death, murder and rape. And so in the last 48 hours, 51 dead migrants were found in an 18 wheeler uh, near San Antonio. I want this committee to have my voice and the record to note that we have uh, acknowledged their death, uh, that we are sad regarding their death and that we are taking um, a mental moment of silence uh, for uh, this heinous uh, and uh, absurd tragedy. Until America fixes its broken immigration system, passing comprehensive immigration reform, which myself, the chairwoman, uh, and many members of this committee have filed over and over again uh, with a vast agreement around the nation from uh, the work on um, ag um, uh, uh, procedures uh, to help our farmers, uh, to DACA, still undone, uh, to uniting families undone. Uh, we've worked very hard uh, to the dismay of those of us who've tried to use the legal system. Uh, immigration uh, opponents blindly, without thinking, without uh, reviewing, without understanding, have blocked this legislation. So I want to add into the record uh, two men charged in connection with deaths of 51 migrants and now three uh, as unanimous consent to place this into the record. Without objection. Uh, and I will hope that we will have an opportunity, Madam Chair, uh, to go back to this uh, issue uh, and look at the horrors of what happened and how did it happen. It's not just uh, the failure in terms of uh, the uh, individuals who have come out of desperation, but there are a whole lot of elements that we should address. Let me quickly ask to put into the record, uh, ICE deported veterans while unaware it was required to carefully screen them, asked unanimous consent, Washington Post article, asked that? unanimous consent. And then uh, military service was once a fast track to US citizenship. The Trump administration keeps narrowing that possibility. These policy changes hurt military recruitment and effectiveness. Ask unanimous consent to place that into the record. Without Let me quickly ask a question uh, to the witnesses on, um, and note for the record that there are 45,000 um, active veterans at the active military that are immigrants and 2.4 million that are of immigrant origin. But let me ask um, the, um, uh, Dr. Jennifer uh, McDonald, um, can you um, estimate uh, the value, uh, the value of having the opportunity to recruit uh, veterans and also that happen to have a immigrant history or my, uh, uh, background and as well how important it is uh, to address this question uh, as it relates to um, the uh, dealing with the health benefits when they are not treated fairly. Um, and are screened, uh, are, are deported rather. What, what negative impact happens uh, to both the veteran but also military service? Congresswoman, we know that veterans who are able to access VA health care and benefits do better, not just in the first year of transition where challenges arise and many veterans face mental health concerns, adjustment to um, society as they exit the military. Um, this is why we've, we've initiated a program called Solid Start that aims to contact veterans um, multiple times throughout that first year. But we also know that the benefit of accessing healthcare and benefits extends throughout the rest of that veteran's life. It's essential to us, and that's why it's a, it's a top priority for us to make sure that we reach out to each and every veteran who is eligible for care and services that they've earned in the military. We've heard the word criminal and have you notified the victims and we are all very concerned to make sure our nation is safe. But can you tell us that these uh, immigrant uh, veterans that 
are just uh, randomly deported because of the very harsh uh, uh, implementation of the Trump administration, um, that they're making it harder for them to receive a certificate and background checks and other things, that, that you feel that you can put a protocol in place uh, that would uh, vet these veterans and ensure that they could get into services that make them safe and contributing uh, citizens in the United States. The gentleman's and, and time has expired, but the witness can answer the question. I thank the chairwoman. And Congresswoman, I will defer to Ms. Rogers on that question. VA does look forward to taking care of each and every veteran eligible to seek care with us. Yes, Ms. Rogers. Yeah, I, I would add and thank you um, that you, I think under the MV uh, initiative, we are, VHS is doing everything in its power and within its discretion to make fair decisions for all of the veterans. But I do think at the end of the day, that parole is a temporary um, status in the United States. It is not a permanent, it's not a permanent solution for the challenges that we see with the veterans who have been removed. 